For the cylinder blocks here, we'll need some 20 by 20 raw stock. I have 20 by 19 and a half, so guess what we're going to use? Um, this is a rather hard to grab part once you're finished, so uh, order of operations is really important here. The last two parallel surfaces on the thing will be these here. So we'll clamp it upside like this first, machine the radius and the chamfer. Then we will turn it around like this, machine both sides, freehand on the shaper. And uh, last not least, we're going to turn it with this side facing down and machine this angle onto here. Okay, let's do it. Alright, so here are the parts. Um, freehand working on the shaper takes a bit getting used to. It's similar to working on the lathe, only one hand wheel is constantly moving back and forth and that really is uh, can be a struggle at times, but I think I got these shapes blended in nicely. I'm going to hit them with a half round fire, fine and coarse, uh, to clean things up a little, but uh, apart from that they're pretty much ready as they are. So um, last thing left is then to put the angle onto this side here and then they're done. Okay, here are the blocks mounted in position. Um, you can see I've screwed up these first holes here. I don't know why, but I thought I had to uh, mount them flush with the front side. Uh, they're actually not, there has to be a gap here. So these holes, yeah. Luckily, they don't play any particular role. The positioning on these holes relative to the block itself wouldn't be that critical as well uh, as they're just spacers. You see the piston or the cylinder rather is mounted on top here and uh, its position is important but uh, this thing will just move with the uh, cylinder then. Uh, you can see the sides here line up nicely. That's mostly what I was paying attention to. Um, these surfaces here, they won't be seen, the tops and the sides, because they're covered by the cylinder itself. Not trying to make excuses, just telling you how it is. And um, of course, once again, once this is painted, it'll probably look a, li a little bit nicer than it does now. But seriously, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we'll tackle the bearing blocks here tomorrow, but for now I'll call it the night. On the bearing blocks we'll do a click spring approach and uh, glue our templates to the steel and um, saw the contour out. Now it just so happens I have a piece of 10mm stock which has these beveled edges so that I can minimize the amount of rough sawing I need to do. Um, I want to be sure though that the bottom is absolutely flat so that these sit nicely on the main plate. So that's what we're going to do first. Well I didn't have that on video but what never happened to me before is one of these pins that keep your saw blade in just sheared off. 
midway um, and you can see this one is pretty close to it as well so I guess these also have their service life Okay, I roughed out the shape using saws and drills. Now let's hog out everything that isn't a kick-ass bearing stand, shall we? Wow, this thing is a metal eater. It's incredible, like a file only a hundred times faster. Um, I replaced the bearings in this front holder here because I noticed there was an excessive amount of play and it got quite hot when working with it and now it's just transformed. Uh, one of the bearings in here was completely shredded to bits, the inner ring completely disintegrated, the uh, balls were flying around loosely in there and uh, the cage was just pulverized. And now that I got fresh bearings in here, it's just so much more controllable. It still tries to escape though, you really have to lean into it or you have to take delicate cuts with this. Uh, like with the milling machine, the cutter just tries to grab whenever you're trying to feed in the same direction. And whenever you go over a corner, like here, it's just gone. There's no way to control it. But uh, seriously, especially for these inner radii, it's, it's just perfect. I mean, how long would it take to hog this out with a half round or a full round file? It's just such a labor saver. The only downside is the um, chips that this thing makes. You know, when on a lathe or on a milling machine, there's that occasional tiny chip, which is just really sharp, like a dart, and it just wants to get into your hand well, this thing produces nothing but this kind of chips. It's really, well, a nuisance. Alright, I filed them both down to where they look identical enough to me and the proportions are right. I haven't done the tops on both, they get rounded off later. But for now, I want to keep it flat so that I can drill the three holes in here. Um, in the middle will be the oiler and on the sides there are two dummy screws which indicate like there was a bearing half bolted onto here. We're going to use these tiny rivets for that, uh, they'll look just fine. On the bottom of course the mounting holes and on the side the bearing hole. Uh, the final measurement is going to be quarter inch because I have the stock and the tooling for it. Um, we'll drill these both 8 millimeters, however, because I want to press in some bronze bushings into here just to make the friction a little less and the bearings lasting longer. Alright, long story short, I spend a lot of time draw filing, you know, sideways like this to get all the filing marks out of here. Uh, then I went at it with sandpaper and finally polished them. Uh, this is as good as I will make them look, mostly because I'm fresh out of sandpaper and my arms hurt. You know, it's been a long day when the vice is covered in file shavings. So, um, Again, I'm hoping most of the scratches you are still able to see will be covered up by the paint later on. You can see I've got the rivets in here. Um, I've not uh, loctited them in yet as I plan to do. Um, you will also notice if you look carefully that I had to repair one of them on the go. Um, you may recall I sawed out some pieces here to separate these guys from their uh, mother stock 
and in order to get the two saw lines to mate I uh, drilled a couple of holes and one was just too far in and I didn't want to make it all again since I also wouldn't have had the stock for it so I just soldered a pin into the side and again it's barely visible so I'm okay with that what really matters is of course that this 8mm pin here fits nicely in here which means that both bores are nicely aligned and you can see the uh, pin is just a little tight in here I didn't deburr the cross hole from here so you can even when I put this one in here it's, it's just going rough you know that's just the way it is but those two meet up very nicely so I can safely say that when I press the bearings in here and put the axle through it it will uh, run freely in there and of course they really look the part in my opinion it's always the flywheel that makes this thing look like a steam engine already so yeah you can see <laughs> it's not that far away we're getting there we're really getting there <laughs>